And now a little story from the apple seed. I do love the western section of the United States, and I love to tell tall tales. I'm horrified at the number of school children who don't really understand what a tall tale is. And often when I'm at a school, I have a very limited time frame, so I have to do a little bit of teaching as I'm telling stories, and you have to get it in quick. So I usually define tall tales for them as a little bit of truth stretched into something absolutely ridiculous. And if I have a little more time in uh, lesson time, I'll say, well, uh, the world is filled with stories. The people of Europe are are famous for their wonderful fairy tales and folk tales. And the people of Asia, they are famous for wisdom literature. But in these United States, we can lie better than anybody else (laughs) on the planet. We are the owners of the tall tale. I was watching the History Channel one night, and there was this show on there about the gold rush out in California. You know, 1849, Sutter's Mill and all like that. And I thought... I'm going to go out west and strike it rich on a gold claim. Why should I be working so hard as a storyteller when I could just go out there and strike it rich and live the life of ease the rest of my born days? So I told my wife I was headed out to California to strike it rich on a gold claim. She said, that'll be fine. I'll have supper hot and ready for you when you get back home. <laughs> I climbed on the train. We chugged out to California. As soon as I got off the train, there was this old timer standing there on the rail platform. He was a 100 if he was a day. So I figured he knew everything about California. California might have even built the place himself. He (laughs) lives so long. And I asked him, I said, tell me, old timer, where do I go to pan for gold like I saw on the History Channel on the television? He said, oh, you greenhorns, you come out here from the east and you think you're going to strike it rich on a gold claim? It's very dangerous, hard work. You've got to go way up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. There's all kinds of wild animals that will attack you up there, bear and mountain lion. It's very, very dangerous. I said, oh, I'm not afraid of bear and mountain lion. I'm from South Carolina. We have alligator where I live. You know what an alligator is. It's a dinosaur that's been hungry for a million years. So I'll be fine. I'll be just fine. He said, well, I would advise you to learn everything you can about the dangers of this frontier territory before you strike out. So I went inside the rail station and there was a magazine rack there. They were selling copies of the old farmer's almanac. Everybody knows no matter where you are in the world, you should live your life according to the old farmer's almanac. Yeah. Now, I mean the yellow old farmer's almanac, not that one with the blue cover. You know, I wouldn't do anything by the dates and calendar in that Omnac. You need the yellow Old Farmer's Almanac. And sure enough, there was information in there about wild animals, about bear in particular. It said that there had been an increase of bear activity in the United States. And so they had written an article about that, particularly for rural folks and all. And it said that if you were going hiking in the woods, you could take precautions. One of the things you could do was tie jingle bells onto your clothing. Because when you walked along, the jingle bells would ring and the bear from a distance would hear that and then he would run off because he doesn't really want to meet up with you, and that would scare off the bear. And as an extra precaution, carry a bottle of pepper spray in your pocket so that if you surprise a bear or he didn't hear the jingle bells, then you might spray him with the pepper spray and he'll run away. Might give you a little time to get away from the bear before he attacks. And uh, then it said, uh, you might need to be familiar with signs that a bear has been nearby. And there was a section of the article that showed you how to evaluate bear scat. Y'all know what that is, right? Yeah, it's the stuff the bear leaves behind after he's been around for a while. And it said that that there were two types of bear that you needed to be aware of, the black bear and the grizzly bear. And and if you came up on some bear scat and you picked through it, uh, black bear scat was usually full of blueberries and bits of squirrel fur, and grizzly bear scat was full of jingle bells and pepper spray. (laughs) So after I read that, I decided I'd just take my chances. I started off up through that mountain trail, and I got way up high in the Sierra Nevada. And sure enough, there was a little row of cabins and a creek out behind those cabins. A bunch of men in there, Levi's, they were all squatted over that creek, panning for gold. I elbowed my way in, said, make way for South Carolina. They said, no, 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 no. I said, yes, yes. It's a free country. I can pan for gold if I want to. They said, no, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. But that's not what we mean. You can't just start right in panning for gold. You're going to have to be here a while. I mean, it it comes out of the little stones in the creek beds and just tiny little flecks. It's going to take you days, weeks, maybe years to get enough gold to be a rich man. So first thing you have to do is build your house. Oh, 
I forgot that. So a man went into his log cabin, and he came back with an ax, and he said, here, you can cut you some logs and build you a house. Well, I looked around, and I said, well, tell me which trees you want me to cut down. I hate it when, uh, like, uh, the bulldozers come in for a new subdivision, they just mow down all the trees and build all the houses right out in the hot blazing sun. I don't like it when they cut all the shade down. I said, I, I don't want to ruin your shade, so show me which section of the forest you want thinned out. He hooked a thumb around behind him. He said, how about right back there? You could cut that tree down. I turned around, and behind me was a tree big around as this whole room, and it went way up in the air. I said, I can't cut that down. That's going to make me tired. That's going to make my children tired. That'll make my unborn grandchildren tired. He started laughing. He said, oh, we don't use an axe to cut a redwood down. He said, we save the axe for picking our teeth with. Let me show you how we cut the tree down. He took the axe back into his cabin. He came back with a big jar of peanut butter about that big around. A great big jar. He had bought it at Costco. And he pulled the top of that peanut butter open, and he stuck his hand down in it and got a big gob of peanut butter, and he started walking all the way around that great big tree, smearing a line of peanut butter on the bark. When he had finished, he went down the river and stuck his fingers in his mouth and whistled real loud, and a whole herd of beaver come running up out of the creek and they started licking on that peanut butter and then they started chewing through the bark and they got to running like a pack of buzz saws around that tree chips flying every which way pretty soon they had gnawed that tree down till it was standing up on a little stick about as big as my tiny finger I said oh I know what to do now I thank the beavers they all ran jumped back in the river I started to push that tree over and that gold miner he said wait 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 safety first he reached in his pocket and took out a cell phone and went boop, 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 boop. I heard somebody on the other end answer, hello, and he yelled, timber, poop, stuck the phone back in his pocket. I said, what in the world are you doing? He said, well, this tree is so tall, when it comes down, it's going to fall into the next state, so we have to call into Nevada and tell them a tree is coming down so they can get out of the way. I said, you're a liar. He said, no, go to the edge of the mountain and look. So I walk to the edge of a mountain cliff and look off. Down there in Nevada, people run around, timber, timber. Mamas are jumping in their minivans, running to school, checking kids out early. Timber, timber. Everybody cleared out of the way, and I gave that tree a push. He said, that's so tall. It'll take it a couple days to fall. So you might as well come in my house and live with me for a couple days while we wait for that tree to come down. Sure enough, into the second day, we heard it hit. Wham! It made a nice clean break right down the side of the mountain into Nevada. And we'd called ahead so nobody got hurt, except cows don't have cell phones. <laughs> and I had accidentally smashed a whole herd of cattle into hamburger meat. But that turned out to be a good thing. We had a big backyard fry up with all that hamburger, made a lot of friends that way. It was a lot of fun. And I didn't need to cut another tree, not another one, because I could just live in that great big hollow log. You think a double wide trailer is nice? You should have seen my log. I was comfortable as a skunk in a stump. So I moved into that log. I said, now I'm ready to pan for gold. And they said, uh-uh, not yet. I said, well, I got me a house to live in. What do I need now? They said, what you gonna do for food? Well, I knew right away I couldn't keep smashing cattle into hamburger. <laughs> that would make enemies really quick. And I said, I don't reckon you've got a grocery store around here. They said, no, 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 no grocery stores. We hunt for our meat. I said, oh, now I live in South Carolina. We have hunting lodges and all that. Give me a gun and I can hunt. They said, this is California. We don't have any guns. <laughs> I said, well, how am I supposed to kill something without a gun? They said, you don't need a gun. We'll show you how to do it. This man walked out and he sat down on that big 24-foot stump that I had sawed down. And he sat there for a little while and I sat next to him. We waited and a duck came by. Mwank, 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 mwank. He gave that duck a look and it just fell right out of the sky, <laughs> dead at his feet. I said, how are you doing that? And he says to me, I ugly him down. <laughs> I said, ugly him down? He said, yeah. He said, you look the bird right in the eyeball, give it a real mean, ugly look, and it scares it so bad it has a heart attack and falls right out of the sky. I said, wow, who taught you how to do that? He said, my wife. <laughs> said, Why don't you bring her out here and let her hunt for you? He said, uh-uh, she tears them up too bad. <laughs> so he taught me how to ugly birds down. I sat down on that stump. A little while, a duck came by. Wank, 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 wank. I gave it a look. And it flew off like it was laughing at me. Wank, 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 wank. I waited. A turkey came up. I gave it a look. Off it went. I sat there on that stump, ugly and birds all day. Never could drop one out of the sky. And that's when I realized I was going to starve to death on account of my good looks. <laughs> I mean, look at this profile, ladies. I should have gone to Hollywood and become a movie star. 
I thought I was going to starve to death. They said, well, you know, we hunt for meat because we need protein, but another source for protein is eggs. You could just collect eggs. I said, where are your chickens? They said, we don't have chickens, but up there on the cliff above the camp, there's an eagle's nest. There'll be eggs in there. So I started climbing up to the top of that cliff. Now, there's snow on the top of the Sierra Nevada, even in the summertime. There was snow way up there. I was walking through snow right up to my Adam's apple. I finally got up to a big pile of sticks, and I reached in there to get some eagle's eggs. Of course, the mama eagle, she didn't like that one bit. She came flying up out of there with her talons out. She's going to jerk my eyeballs out. I had to get out of there and get out of there fast. So I just jumped up on top of that snow bank, sat down on the seat of my britches, went sliding down the mountain. While I slid so fast, the friction caught my britches on fire. And I was yelling, I'm on fire! I'm on fire! And the gold miners grabbed me and they threw me in the river and that boiled all the water in the river and we had boiled trout for supper. So that turned out to be just fine. But I didn't stay, you know. I'd burnt the seat of my britches out. I'd nearly killed myself more than once. I thought, this ain't anything like what I saw on the History Channel. That just goes to show you, you can't believe everything you see on television. <laughs> so I went back down the mountain, and I was going to get on the train and come back to South Carolina, and I thought, uh-oh. I told my wife I was going to strike it rich on a gold claim, and if I don't come home with something for her, she's going to be very upset. So then I saw it right there in the rail station. You might have seen one at your local Walmart. There was this big glass box and you drop 50 cents in it, and you get about 30 seconds to drive a claw around and see if you can grab a prize. I fished $47.50 worth of quarters through that machine before I got good enough to draw that claw around like a professional, and I grabbed a little gold ring. It's not real gold. I think it's spray paint, but don't tell my wife. She doesn't know the difference. She never listens to this radio show, so it'll be fine. And I stuck that in my pocket. I got on the train, and I started for home. Well, when the train pulled into the station in South Carolina, there was my wife waiting for me. She said she'd be there and have supper hot and ready for me when I got home. And I pulled that ring out of my pocket and flashed it out the window. I said, look here, look what I got you. She said, oh, you struck it rich on a gold claim. And she got so excited, she tripped and fell off the rail platform, and the train ran smack over her. I got off the train. There lay my wife's legs. There lay my wife's arms. There lay my wife's head. And that made me mad. I mean, I'd gone out to California, worked my fingers to the bone, nearly died trying to strike it rich, and I brought her a gold ring and her laying around like that. I said, get up and pull yourself together. She did. We went home, had supper, and that was the end of that. Thanks for joining us for a little story from the Appleseed.